I got a notification that I was running out of storage space on my NAS. But instead of just throwing bigger hard drives into it, let's check out an option that's an upgrade in more ways than one. Synology sent a new NAS my way to explore. As with all of my reviews, the company has had no input into the video, the opinions expressed here are entirely my own, and no money has changed hands. I'm in a position that I know a number of other network-attached storage owners have faced, where they're running out of space, but it's not cost-effective to swap out their existing hard drives for larger ones. Instead of scaling up with bigger drives, it can be advantageous to scale out with more of them. And this model, the DS1821 Plus, will let us see exactly what that's like. The front panel is simple but functional. Other than the drive base, there's indicator LEDs for power and network activity, and a USB 3 port in the lower right corner. There's a lot of connectivity on the rear of the unit though, with three more USB 3.2 Gen 1 ports, four gigabit network ports, and networking is something we'll discuss a bit later on, and the socket for the internal AC power supply. With eight SATA hard drive bays, there's plenty of room for storage and growth. Synology sent along a few of its Plus series drives. These are eight terabytes and run at 5400 RPM. They are, of course, guaranteed to be compatible with the NAS, but you're free to install other makes and models of drives if you prefer. The company maintains a helpful list of models that it's tested and know to work. These drive caddies can be used two different ways. With 3.5 inch drives, they're tool free. Just pop off these side rails, drop in the drive, then snap them back on. Also included with the 1821 Plus is a bag of screws, and these are for if you plan to install SATA SSDs instead. And keeping the drives cool is a pair of big 120mm fans with temperature control that also manage to remain surprisingly quiet. Initial setup couldn't be simpler. Just plug the NAS into your network, power it on, then browse to find.synology.com and it'll locate the device and walk you through the process. Once you get the operating system called Disk Station Manager or DSM installed, then it helps you set up the storage pool. There's options for the typical RAID setups like 1, 5, and 10, but it defaults to SHR or Synology Hybrid RAID. The dialog describes SHR as being for beginners, but that's a bit misleading. It's much more powerful and flexible than a fixed RAID type. Synology has a neat calculator on its site that better explains how it works. Unlike with regular RAID, SHR lets you mix different drive sizes to get the maximum usable space while retaining redundancy. It also lets you add drives later or swap drives out to expand the capacity. This means you don't have to fill all the drive bays right away. You can add storage later on as your needs grow, or replace drives with bigger ones on the fly. While this unit is called a NAS, Synology has really positioned the Disk Station series as being multifunction servers, and the list of optional packages you can install really underscores this. Some are related to file storage, such as backup tools and file utilities, but there's also options like email, web, and VPN servers, and even a virtual machine hypervisor. Open source and third-party packages are available too, not just for nerdy stuff like Apache and Python, but also popular media center platforms like Plex. So what about performance? The DS1821 Plus has an AMD Ryzen V1500B, which is a quad-core chip clocked at 2.2 GHz. It ships with 4 GB of DDR4 ECC memory, and a popular upgrade with this model is to add more. It's very straightforward to do. There's a door on the bottom held on with a couple screws, and taking it off gets you access to the pair of RAM slots. Synology sent me a second module, and the official maximum the unit can support is a very healthy 32 gigs, though some owners have had luck installing 64. Another and even easier upgrade is to add an SSD. 
Hidden inside the first drive bay are a pair of M.2 slots. Synology also sent me one of its own branded SSDs, a 400GB unit, and it's a tool-free install. It just snaps into place. Adding an SSD lets you do a couple of things. The most common use case is to set it up as a read cache. There's a built-in utility that can monitor how you use the NAS and make recommendations. Then it's just a few clicks to add it, and the net result is that commonly accessed data on the NAS can be served up much more quickly. The other neat thing is that SSDs can be set up as their own volumes. If there's data you need to read and write as quickly as possible, this is a good option without using up one of the 3.5 inch drive bays. It also can be a clever way to save power and wear on the mechanical drives. You can set them to go to sleep after a period of inactivity, but using the SSD won't wake them up. Unlike with the mechanical drive, Synology doesn't list any known compatible M.2 SSDs on its site, other than its own branded models. But that doesn't mean others won't work. To test this, I added a second SSD, a 1TB drive from Intel, and the NAS had no problems detecting and using it. There is one limitation though. Only Synology branded M.2 SSDs can be used as their own volumes. Third-party drives are limited to just being set up as read caches. It's said to be for performance reasons, but it's disappointing to see given how traditionally DIY-friendly that Synology has been. Around the time of this review, there's been a change in how DSM reports on drive health. Previously, you could see the smart data about all the drives in the system, in addition to the built-in health monitoring that DSM offers. But the smart reports were removed as of DSM version 7.2.1, ostensibly because that data alone isn't a foolproof indicator of whether a drive is failing. That may be true, but it's still useful information to have, especially as drives age. For a company that caters to power users, removing smart statistics, even though they may not be perfect, is a strange choice, and one that hopefully Synology will reconsider. So with healthy drives, what's performance like? As one would expect, it's easy to saturate a single gigabit network link with file copies at 120 megabytes per second. That's why there's four ports built into the 1821 Plus. You can set them up for redundancy or link aggregation to get better performance. Disk Station Manager supports SMB3 multi-channel, which is an inexpensive way to get faster speeds without special network equipment. But not all client operating systems support it well or at all. And that leads us to the last optional upgrade I wanted to take care of. Around the back of the unit is a blank plate that looks suspiciously like an expansion slot cover. To access this, I needed to remove the screws that hold the top housing on, then lift it away. And sure enough, there's a four-lane PCIe slot just waiting to be put to use. Synology had sent me one of its 10 gigabit network cards, and I just needed to drop the card in and secure it in place. Synology offers a few different models of cards in both SFP Plus and 10G based T versions, and there's even a couple of third party cards on the compatibility list. I opted to go with the two port SFP Plus version, so I connected up a DAC cable to my 10 gig switch. And of course, file copy performance got much better. I was seeing speeds of up to 500 megabytes per second, copying 200 gigabytes of video files in about six minutes. And that didn't involve the SSDs I'd installed earlier. This was all going to the array of four mechanical drives, so a larger array would of course yield better speeds. A copy to the SSD, as you might expect, went even faster, pushing 800 megabytes per second. 10 gigabit networking is clearly a great way to get the best performance from this NAS, and it works equally well whether you're just trying to copy file from one 10 gig capable client computer or share the storage across several. And that leads us to something else I wanted to test. Everything we've seen so far has been from using this 1821 Plus fresh out of the box with blank hard drives, which is certainly a common use case. But power users have been using NASes long enough that there are no doubt some people out there with existing, older units looking to upgrade. Does the 1821 Plus offer anything to help? As it turns out, yes. 
You can, of course, connect the old NAS directly to it through the network to transfer files, and this is the best path if your source device is of a different brand. But if you're moving from a previous Synology device, the process can be even easier, and that's what I wanted to try out. One option is to use the Migration Wizard package, which will copy over all your data and settings in one shot. I've been using my DS916 Plus for over six years, and it's seen a couple of hard drive upgrades during that time. Nevertheless, I'm running out of space, and copying all the data would take quite a while, and require at least as much free space on the new unit. But Synology also says that you can just take the drives from your existing disk station and install them in the new one. So I decided to put my data on the line to see how well it worked. The first thing I did was upgrade my older unit to the latest version of Disk Station Manager, as this can apparently help make the migration process go more smoothly. Then, as a precaution, Synology recommends to export a backup of the NASA's configuration. After that, I could shut down the unit and remove the drives, keeping in mind which drive came from which bay. I shut down the DS1821 Plus next and exchanged the drives. The drive caddies are similar between the two, but not identical, so this step took just a few minutes. With all my old drives in the new disk station, I could power it on and give it a moment to boot up. Back in a web browser, the Synology Find tool picked up the unit right away, and just as it should, it recognized that the drives had been moved from another disk station and offered to migrate them. All I had to do was supply it with the latest DSM installer file and let it do its thing. Sure enough, after I logged in, everything had been brought over from the previous hardware, with my data completely intact, including the warning about running out of disk space. Time to take care of that next. The array had been set up originally using SHR, and a nice feature is how it supports on-the-fly expansion, in my case by adding another physical drive. DSM detected the new disk, and it took just a few clicks to integrate it into the existing drive pool. After that, I just needed to wait while it redistributed the data across the drives in the background. A couple days later, it had finished, and now I had more free space. There's another thing that SHR allows you to do, and that is to increase redundancy by adding another drive. This is kind of the equivalent of going from RAID 5 to RAID 6, where the capacity of two drives is given up for parity data instead of just one. But the upside is that you're better protected in the event that multiple drives fail around the same time. Which is not as uncommon as you may think, given how most people install drives from the same manufacturing batch. Synology calls this SHR2, and I think it's a good idea to consider using, especially as the number of physical drives in an array increases. So, who is this model for? I think it cuts across a few segments. Of course, there are small businesses where you have a need for network storage and some lightweight services, but don't want to deal with the cost or complexity of a traditional server. It's also great for power users and creative professionals who need a lot of capacity in a compact package, and the option of adding 10 gig networking is a fantastic perk. And of course, it's a logical step up for an existing Synology owner who's grown beyond the capabilities of their current disk station. And if the 1821 Plus ends up being not quite enough over time when it comes to storage, there's another upgrade option beyond the ones we looked at here. A pair of eSATA ports on the back allow for connecting two DX517 expansion units, which hold five drives each. These can be set up for additional network storage or used for local backup of the data on the NAS itself. Of course, the use of RAID alone isn't a viable backup solution, so DSM offers many options for this, from sending data to a variety of popular cloud platforms to just copying your most important files off to an external USB hard drive. Ultimately, I think the DS1821 Plus has a lot going for it. Solid performance, more software features than we have time for in this video, the option for high-speed networking, and plenty of drive bays to grow into. For the about $1,000 US it sells for without drives, I think it offers good value. 
Inevitably, some will say that they could build their own NAS for less money, and this is probably true. But it wouldn't be as easy to set up or maintain, nor would it come with the support and three-year warranty that this NAS offers. Synology's been a popular choice when it comes to network storage for a number of years, and solid models like this one certainly help explain why. Thank you again to Synology for sending out the DS1821 Plus for me to review. If you want to learn more, I've included a link in the description. If you liked the video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe. Please consider supporting my work over on Patreon, and as always, thanks for watching.